to be your Invest Coach, Ms. JJ. Today, I'm really excited to be able to interview my husband's chiropractor uh, and an amazing woman, Dr. Sharon Pedersen, who is an athlete, chiropractor, and a cancer survivor. So we're going to get into that a little bit later on. Dr. Sharon Pedersen is the founder of Corrective Chiropractic Ballerine. Sharon is a passionate vitalistic chiropractor that has run her own successful chiropractic practice in Clifton Springs, Australia, for nearly 28 years, helping people live their best life through optimising their mobility and spinal health through all stages of life, has been a major focus in all of her years of practice. She's passionate about appreciating and continuing to learn more ways to enhance the body's innate ability to heal itself naturally, which I'm so, so interested in. In 2003, age 31, as a mum of a three-year-old and 18-month-old girls, Sharon had a miscarriage with her third baby and was diagnosed with uterine cancer. Sharon was challenged mentally, emotionally and spiritually as well as physically beyond anything ever before. Sharon knew her body would be able to heal itself without intervention. She wasn't certain of the path, but knew she would find it. Resourcefulness is one of her strongest attributes, and she knew her gut instinct was the right path. 20 years later, Sharon is cancer-free and at her peak in health and fitness. Sharon is passionate about fitness and experiencing life to the fullest, she is a competitive track and field masters athlete and holds multiple state and national records, including the national record for 2,000 metre steeple chase for women in the age of 45 to 49 age group, which ranges second in the world. I had no idea. This is amazing in that event. Sharon has raced six marathons and won the Nashville Rock and Row marathon in not rocky road <laughs> not the chocolate marathon in 2015 she loves challenging her body and her mind and is always striving for high performance in all aspects of her life sharon's purpose is to help people express their fullest life potential through the fullest expression of love light optimal health Happiness and connection. Welcome, Dr. Sharon Pedersen. Oh, thank you, Janelle. What a that was a lovely introduction. Well, thank that's you. you. That's got a, a bit emotional there. What an introduction. Thank you. Um, and as most of you would hear, the reason you know there's so many reasons for me to interview to you today. One of them being, and we've been connected on Facebook for a while now, mm. and I know we're you know like minded in lots of different ways. And you've been helping my husband through his cancer journey in regards to chiropractic, and we've been using the infrared sauna. Uh, and you're so inspiring, you know. And even before I knew your story, um, getting your uh, bio and understanding the depth of your experience is just phenomenal so but you've just got this beautiful energy about you and this positivity and it does not surprise me at all what you've achieved like I'm like of course you do that you know <laughs> Look at of course she's done that of course she's killed herself with cancer you know <laughs> of course <laughs> if anyone's going to do it you'll do it oh, because no. that's how powerful your mind is isn't it mm. Yeah, look, I guess, you know, for me, thank you for such beautiful, positive words. I appreciate it. And, um, you know, at the time when you're going through certain things, you don't kind of overthink it. I just, you kind of push through, you know, I certainly have had, you know, a few different things, highs and lows, as we all do. But one of the things I've really always been passionate about is finding a lesson in the challenge. You know, yeah. I always believe, you know, it's in our mess that we find our message. Yeah. And sometimes it's very hard during the time, but yeah. the, the closer we can narrow the gap of when we find the message in the mess, yeah, I believe the more powerful and the better able we are to, to kind of work through that. Yeah, because sometimes we can't, we don't know what that lesson is, but if we just trust that there is a lesson there and that 
that's going to come somewhere. And sometimes it can be years later. For me, mm. it has been. Mm. Sometimes I, I haven't understood what that lesson is until years later. And I'm talking like sometimes 20 years, years later. Then going, aha, that's – or even when you meet someone, you think, isn't that amazing, that connection that you have and how that all goes in line with how you've, you know, lived your life. You know, mm. all of those different connections. Yeah. And I think in today's busy world, we don't take the time enough to reflect upon our personal life and our journey. Yeah. We're so busy doing that we kind of need to schedule and make the time to, you know, just connect within and think and reflect and feel the, our life's journey. And yeah. Just really appreciate the depth of what we've all done. We've all done amazing things. You know, I don't, yeah. I'm just a normal mum. I've cried in corners. I've <laughs> broken that, you know. But, and we all have, you know, we're all human. We've all got our superpowers. But, you know, just taking that time to acknowledge and give ourselves credit. We're yes. so hard on ourselves. And yeah. I really believe more than ever that, you know, if we can just be kinder and appreciate what, you know, our great qualities, we've all got amazing qualities that yeah. we don't credit ourselves for. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. And a lot of my friends being a coach for so many years, I've got a lot of coach friends. And there's no such there's no such thing as perfect perfect perfectionism, mm. right? It's just mm. a myth. Mm. You can't be perfect. And I think, you know, knowing that and knowing that all emotions are great. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know where this sort of concept came from to say, you know, you've got to be positive all the time. That's just not realistic. But to actually understand I can be resourceful and angry. Mm -hmm. I can be resourceful and sad. Um, and and that's all part of the human experience. Absolutely. It is. And it's honoring the emotion, how often we kind of try and brush aside grief, sadness, yeah. you know, the the deep emotions, you know, experiencing them is how they can flow through and not yes. get stored yeah. and come back to bite us later. Yeah. As well. So, you know, just and that's connecting to ourselves again, allowing ourselves the time, the focus and the honour to touch base with our emotions. Yeah. yeah. And it takes it takes you know self love to give us that that time to, that we honour ourselves enough to actually take the time to feel what it is that we're feeling. Yeah. Absolutely. And so what, what got you into becoming a chiropractor? So, you know, and it's interesting because I've only recently, and I'm 50, I guess I'm how old I am. I'm 54. Yeah, I'm 54. I think I'm 54. <laughs> um, so if I've told people I'm 53 or 55, I think I'm 54. <laughs> anyway, um, it's taken me all this time to actually realise how important something like chiropractic services are for people and how it's all connected with your health. Like, to me, years ago, it was very much, okay, you only go if you've got a sore back. Right? Yeah. So, and I can imagine probably most people think that way. Um, so, so what got you into to chiropractic? Well, I love this question. Yeah. Now, thank you, because it just takes me back to that pivotal time in my life at the age of 16 and a half where I'd always wanted to help people and I wanted to be a paediatric. So I wanted to study medicine and help babies. You know, yeah. because that's a common kind of um, goal for many, you know, health professionals. Yeah. Anyway, so when I was at the at Belmont Market and there was a chiropractor there, Dr. Terry Malloy, who I'll forever be grateful to because I met him and he explained to me what chiropractic was, that the bones of the spine in our vertebra can lose their healthy position and pinch on nerves. And that kind of made sense to me because he said, if those nerves are impinged, well, that can disrupt the brain's intelligent messages from flowing through the body, which can cause health conditions. For yeah. And that made sense to me. I thought, oh, gee, so what? If I can correct the alignment of the spine, that's going to free the flow of the nerve supply through the body from the brain, that brain-body connection will be enhanced or, or back to what it's supposed to be, yeah. our body's going to heal itself. That's actually the way to have a healthy body. And that made sense to me as a teenager. And so I didn't want anything else. I was like, oh, my gosh, I can help so many babies with this. And I was yeah. like, I need children I could help. 
it may be they had some, what we call subluxations of the spine where the vertebra keeps. So, yeah. And from that moment on, I just was so passionate and excited to make a difference with people's health and life through chiropractic and helping people understand the power of their body to heal itself. Yeah. Because it's through the nervous system that that intelligence flows. And if that's impeded or blocked at the spinal level, our innate intelligence expression is reduced. Yeah. And so, you know, after being in practice for 28 years, I'm still just as passionate yeah. and determined as ever to help more people see this. Yeah. And I've just come back from a month's holiday and I was so excited to get back to work. <laughs> like, there is not too many people that yeah. can say that they're excited to go back to work yeah. after having a month off. So, you know, I'm just so grateful to get to do what I do to make a difference in people's lives. Yeah. And, well, if you're thinking about, the, like, the babies too, from that's their start of their life. Mm -hmm. So if you can make an impact to them, because because how many of those babies may grow up with that problem until they're whatever age mm -hmm. um, without yeah. even knowing that there was a problem right at the beginning? Yeah. Well, our body's pain receptors aren't fully developed until about the age of 16. Oh, really? I yes. didn't know that. Yeah. And so, as you said, most people wait until they have pain yeah. before they see a chiropractor because that's what they believe that's what it's for. Yeah. But so many of our adult problems started when we were children and we were never picked up or we kind of just brush it off. We fall off bikes. You know, the yeah. birth process can be very traumatic for many babies yeah. and, and mama. Um, falls off bikes, you know, carrying heavy bags. You know, in our day, we have this massive back, you know, heavy school bag that's on one shoulder. It wasn't cool to have a backpack. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, you know, we're constantly under this load of trauma and because our spine is our lifeline. And yeah. having you know, that opportunity to keep that nervous system functioning optimally throughout our life is truly how we can express our fullest health. And yeah respond to different challenges in our life yeah okay and so talking about challenges in your life yeah you had a massive one in what 2003 but as i said 20 20 years ago now and you say it's nearly an anniversary of that yes which is ironic that we're having this discussion yeah. um so tell me about that so in 2003 you were diagnosed with uterine cancer uterine cancer and at the same time you lost a baby correct wow so 2003 so i, I had my two little girls uh 18 months old uh, sorry montana was three Alyssa was 18 months old and i'm still breastfeeding working so i am a high achiever as you can probably tell yeah. and you know, but passionate about doing well at, you know, everything I can. And we fell pregnant with a third bubby. And I had an instinct that this one was a bit different. My previous two pregnancies were very cruisy. I worked all the way through, you know, I only had a couple of days off work whilst having bubbies. Yeah. So I really pushed myself. But this one I kind of had just, um, it was a bit different. I felt like, you know, I couldn't bear the smell of veggies. Like my, I just felt like there was, kind of nausea that I hadn't had. So there was a, an inkling that this was a bit different. Yeah. I kind of wondered, oh, maybe it's a boy. Maybe that's why, yeah. you know, you hear the stories. Yeah. Anyway, one night I um had this intense pain and ended up um, losing the baby. Yeah. How far were you? 20 weeks. Right. So yeah. I lost the baby and had to have a, yeah, a DMC to remove and was diagnosed. A DMC. A dilatating fluid. So I had to go under surgery and have straight. Right. Yeah. 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 So at that that um stage you would deliver the baby? No. No, no they, they put me under general anesthetic. Right. Yeah. yeah. And did a straight. So right. then I um they found that there was um the HCG thing in the codon gonadotropin hormone it was yeah. excessively high, which was an indicator of uh, uterine cancer. So right. I was diagnosed with uterine cancer and hence was put through this sudden process of appointments with oncologists and specialists. So that was at the same time. So you just lost your baby and yeah. then you've just been told, you've been told you've just lost your baby and then you've got uterine cancer. Yes. Wow, that's a lot to yeah. deal with. Yeah. 
and of course the Wingo Valley, so yeah. Cape Mesa, there was, um, that, yeah, that was a big topic of mine too, so I'm still yeah. kind of, yeah, processing a lot of things, and I'm still working. Yeah. So I, yeah, was dealing with all of that, and I was recommended that the only treatment for this would be either taking chemotherapy or having a hysterectomy. Right. Now, neither of those recommendations sat well with me. Yeah. But the greatest fear to me at the time was my two little girls growing up without a mother. Yeah. So I listened to what the oncologist recommended. I bought myself the MIMS manual, which is the prescriptive drug Bible, basically, that has all the listed medications. So I looked at what the chemotherapy medication was on there because I thought I'm going to look at this. Yeah. It doesn't feel good, but I'm looking at just, you know, I want to know what the options are. What yeah. the info complete informed decision making. Yeah. So when I saw all of the side effects and the brain damage, kidney damage, joint damage, all kinds of <laughs> infertility, all these things, I thought, yeah. no way. Yeah. I'm not doing that. Yeah. And I knew that there was other people that had been diagnosed with cancer that were able to move through and heal and overcome it without intervention. And I knew that if my body was powerful enough to build a human being from two cells, yeah. to build this, I've just got to find the right conditions to allow that power to heal, yeah. to do its best work. And so I began a journey of discovering a lot more about self-care and resetting my nervous system earthing what I was fueling my body what I was thinking yeah. I began to just reflect and make a few changes to do what I could through the narrow path of self-healing right. while still feeding my 18 month old so how did you what sort of things did you do so I can imagine you know, you, there's so much going on. It must have been like a whirlwind of you because mm. you're going through grief. Mm -hmm. You've yeah. got grief of a baby. You've got your other baby babies that you're looking after, one that you're breastfeeding. Yeah. Um, and then you get told that you've got cancer, uterine cancer. Yeah. You know, there's a lot going on there. Yeah. Well, I had a friend who had worked with the Gawler Foundation in Melbourne, which is a retreat for cancer patients. Ian Gawler was a cancer survivor himself. Right. And so people would go there for two weeks or well, however long for doing a lot of mindfulness, meditation, eating clean, organic, whole food, just resetting their bodies. And I wasn't in a position to go there as a retreat because I had my baby, I was breastfeeding my baby, yeah. and that to me was my number one priority. Yeah. Uh, but I was able to access the meal plans and the menus from my friend and I just was able to start. I bought his books, Ian Gawler's books on healing cancer and what he did. And so I began this process of learning how to tap into my mindset and yeah. my thoughts and the power of creative visualisation. Um, that was a big part for me because I knew that we could use our brain yeah. if we focus on the right things. Yeah. And I had an un one thing I look back on. I didn't believe my body would heal itself. Say I didn't hope. I didn't wish. I knew yeah. there's a difference. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I was unshakable in my knowing of how the body, my body, would heal itself. And I was, as I said, I wasn't certain of what that would look like or what I had to do. But I knew I'd find a way, and I'll just yeah. keep searching until I found the way yeah. forward. So for me, I knew that knowing is just something that I look back on and that gutsy, determined 31-year-old at yeah. that time, like that is has just really been a, a massive part of what I know made the difference. Because nothing, yeah, yeah. I was like, I, yeah, so what did I do? We, so I changed the diet, so I was juicing, you know, juicing carrot, buying like, you know, starting a juicing journey. Yeah. I was getting out in the grass, on earthing, connecting with the earth, trying to really spend a bit more time just for myself. Um, and I look back and I was like, oh, I was kind of dabbling a bit here and there, did the best I could yeah. with what 
was available um so I was still running on empty because I was breastfeeding a lizard she was on demand so I was up every hour and a half yeah till she was about three so I still maintain that so you know for the body to heal how it did amidst those conditions is incredible that's testament to our innate intelligence yeah really the superpower that heals us so I yeah to do I actually also researched um, which I look back, it's a bit funny now, but at the time I was very serious about it. Yes. The if we act, we can access um, cytotoxic T cells, are cells in our, the liver that actually kill off cancer cells. Right now, there is an abundance of them in calf liver. Oh, so if I was to access a calf that had was had to be less than six months old, yeah. And had just been slaughtered within a couple of days. Like there's yeah. very strict criteria on wow, maximizing the power of these live cytotoxic yeah. T cells. So anyway, I sourced out of the gym and made my request of what to <laughs> like this is right to and I had to blend it up. Oh yeah, exactly. I had yeah. to blend it up. But I actually remember telling them at the butchers why I was doing it. Like yeah. I was, and that which I think was a little they must have thought that's a strange lady. Yeah. <laughs> however, it's on me for actually just telling yeah. them there. Anyway, so I got it home, blended it up. It took a lot of courage. Like, it wasn't very pleasant. <laughs> but, and I actually didn't go through with drinking it. I got to the point, like, oh, really? I can't do this. And the reason being, like, in Ian Gawler's teachings, he says, if you don't, you've got, if you don't love and if it repulses you, yeah. don't put it in your body. Right. You want to love and honour and appreciate and receive everything with goodness and wholeness and so for me that I guess that was my kind of out <laughs> yeah. so I was and I thought well what's the point if I'm feeling repulsed by this it's yeah. not going to and it's that vibrational level of healing too that yeah. goes beyond the physical yeah you know the mind the heart the soul the spirit the energy the vibration all of the things so yeah so I didn't do that but I tried and I experimented <laughs> I explored so and then and I was having blood tests every single week I'd have to go and check in and have a blood test to see the readings of these HCG levels because right. that determines how active the cells are. Yeah. So even though the, you know, the, the placenta had been removed and everything, it was still lining in the uterus that yeah. was overactive, which is the cancer function, you know, the cancer activity. Yeah. So for six months, I, every week was like my whole life was based upon this one test this one yeah. number is the cells up are they down sometimes they'd be up sometimes they'd be down and yeah. you know I just kept thinking oh it's stress it's stress and I kept finding ways to try not to be stressed but yeah. you know a challenge in the marriage and I was running on empty and still working still running my practice because I yeah. was the breadwinner in the family too so certainly healing through a sympathetic dominant type a personality yeah. was was a journey and um, not one that I would want others, to, you know, I'm hopeful. That's why I wanted to share my story because yeah. I think that when we can reflect upon the different dimensions in our life, we can tone down certain areas and maximise our healing. So essentially over time, eventually the numbers started to come down and then with the odd spike, I'd always get a, I'd always get worried when the, there was a bit of a spike, but, you know, I guess over time eventually they sort of got down and when they were fairly low, they weren't zero, but when they were mostly low, I just decided I'm not even going to bother with these blood tests anymore. Okay. I'm sick of the stress of the week yeah. number. That was stressing me out more than that. So I just knew, once again, through knowing, I just knew, well, it's going to come down eventually. Yeah. So, and then I never really, really um, kind of visited that place again. It's like once I made that decision it's like I didn't want to focus on it and I was busy anyway in life and I just sort of thought well I I didn't want to invite it back so I kind of pretended it didn't even happen yeah and I never really spoke about it and yeah. I kept feeding Alyssa and I fed her till she was four so all yeah. through that I was still able to continue breastfeeding and yeah so we just I guess, yeah, looking back now, I think the lessons are continuing because yeah. even now, like I went for a run this morning and I was thinking of, you know, about what we were going to share and I thought there's actually a couple of people, like a couple that I spent some time with during that, that at that time 
that was so supportive to me because I was receiving letters from oncologists in Melbourne and Adelaide, repeated letters calling me, you know, an irresponsible mom, I'm inconsiderate, I'm, you know, putting my life at risk. All of the things I was continually told, I need chemo, I need to have a hysterectomy, all these things. But I kept saying, no, 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 no. And, you know, having this beautiful couple there, one was a chiropractor and his wife, I mean, it was so positive and supportive to me. I think no one else really believed or yeah. knew why I chose the path I chose. And yeah. so, you know, you sort of look back and you think, even now I just learn so much from the strength I was showed back then. Yeah. And I think also how many women say yes to the first recommendation yeah. without questioning because and they don't have the knowledge or the understanding about the power of the body to heal. Yeah. And so they go down a path and, you know, I now have my beautiful son, yes. Noah, who is 16. Now, I am so proud of the gutsy 31-year-old Sharon yeah. who followed the narrow path, Jay, because if I'd have listened to the medical recommendations and had, a, had chemo or had a hysterectomy, I wouldn't have my son. Yeah. So, you know, I do get emotional when I think about it because it's because I had that strong mindset that allowed me to stay strong in this opposition and, yeah, who knows what would have yeah. happened had I not. Yeah. But he's now 16. Wow, that's amazing. And the thing is that I love how you say that, the knowing, like the knowing. I, I wasn't just positive thinking. I wasn't, you know, mm. I knew. How do people get, how can you, now this is a really hard question because I don't know what the answer is and you may not even know what the answer is because it is your mindset is so important and often when you get something that's scary because people are making decisions based on fear, mm-hmm. right? And so, um, and I think, and, and we've discussed this, I think there's, you know, there's such a, a great place for conventional medicine and holistic medicine. And I think there's a place, we both agree, there's a place for both um, working together. But I think sometimes people are so fearful mm-hmm. that they go down straight away without any question down a path where they think it, that's the only path I've got and and they're encouraged or, you know, people that, you know, whether it's a doctor, whether it's, you know, what's happened in the last three years with what's happened with the big COVID, uh, we look for when we're fearful, we look for somebody that we can look up to often and it's someone of superiority, would it be a teacher, would it be a doctor, would it be a politician? Um, and so I think there's so many people that just, they're fearful and they go down the path. How do you think, why or why do you think you were so sure? And then is there any inspiration that you can give someone else to have that? Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. Yeah. Well, look, I had fear. I'm not going to say I wasn't scared. I was scared. But my knowing was stronger than my fear. Yeah. And I just knew, and I just knew I'll find a way. I was determined. Nothing's going to stop me. Like, I had my girls. I had a reason. It was my girls were not going to live without a mother. Yeah. That was was my thing, my stake in the ground. They're not living without a mother. I don't care what I have to do. Yeah. I will find a way. Yes. And I didn't. You know, I didn't trust the medication and I didn't trust the surgical procedure. Yeah. I didn't want any of that. So yeah. I knew I'd just find a way. Others yeah. have done it before. So I guess finding evidence of yeah. other experiences helps to reaffirm what you know. Yes. So I knew there was people that had you know, resolved other cancers yeah. without medication, without surgery that their bodies and and to me that made sense I just had to support the body's environment you know I 
I learned about acidic and alkaline environments. I, I expanded my knowledge. I learned more about how to tap into the brain power that we don't normally tap into through mindset, visualization, things that were outside the box, I suppose, of mainstream. Yeah. yeah. If we want to get different results, we've got to do things differently. Yeah. So it's it's like and I, I've always put things, I'm very structured in my thinking, so I can put things into steps. So it's like when you're dealt with a fearful situation, it's like you just got to sort of take a breath. Mm -hmm. And because if you make a decision based on fear, most of the time it's not going to be the right one. Right. So so that was sort of sounds like that's what you did. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, you were fearful. I mean, anyone would be fearful. But you stop, take a breath, maybe even see because you'd be, you know, in situations like that, and I know because Rocky's going through the same thing, mm -hmm. that you will have some pressure on you to make a decision, whether it be a doctor, whether it be family, whether it be friends, mm -hmm. you've got to hold strong, go, let me just process this and and let's just take a breath. Mm. Then the second thing I think is really important is that we as humans, we crave certainty. Mm. So when we've got all this uncertainty around us, that's freaking scary. You had some evidence of people that had already done it before, so that also helps you too. But I think that's where we need to, anything in life, is to create that certainty by opening ourselves up to information mm -hmm. and then being able to go, okay, this is what I want to look at, look at it and then make a decision. And I think so many people don't do that. Like they actually put the decision-making in someone else's hands. And you know what, sometimes we don't even know. I'm sure you were at the stage where you didn't know if you were making the right decision mm. at the time. Mm. Rocky still doesn't know if he's making the right decision yeah. along the way. And and sometimes you'll make the right decision and sometimes you won't. But at least it's your decision. Yeah. And at least you've looked at everything. So I think, you know, for the listeners, what I want to say is that you, creating that certainty is really important. Um, and then you talked about that mission that you had. Mm. That purpose that you had and your purpose with your kids. Yes. And I think that is so important to get in, you know, connect with that purpose. And that's going to get you through those challenges, those times, because you know, I often say to Rocky, this is a long game, it's not a short game. Yeah. And so it's like in business, we're both in business. Business doesn't go like that. Business goes like this. Yeah. Life doesn't go like that. Life goes like this. Yeah. So we've got to have, you know, for us to go through those peaks and troughs to understand, okay, I'm, I can still see the vision, the yeah. purpose at the end. It may not be here right now. You yeah. might get numbers that you don't like, whether yeah. it be in business or yeah. in health, but you know what the end game is. Yeah. So true. And I think, you know, the, the, I did have fear of, of my girls growing up without a mum. Yes. That was the, that, that fear was my greatest fear. Yeah. Which drove me to find a solution. Yes. And a solution that had no risk. Yeah. Because the risk of following the mainstream recommendation, it was just not something that I would, would follow. But it is that knowing and... You know, I guess, you know, I don't, growing up, growing up, like I'd always followed Tony Robbins as a teenager, like way back in the day where he did the infomercials in the middle of the night, and, you know, yeah. the video, I had the old video. So I'd always been looking at different ways of thinking and how to yeah. just be a little bit on, on the edge of the, yes. the cusp of learning a bit differently. And, you know, I was reading Deepak Chopra through university and going to different mind seminars, you know, yeah. that, so I'd always been curious and wanting to learn more about things that weren't necessarily mainstream or tangible. And so, you know, I guess for someone that's come from a different background where that may just be very structured and mainstream yeah. and, you know, small, which is really a small box because yeah. you're kind of told, like I say, you're told what to do. You're not really free thinking. You're just kind yeah. of told this is how you do. It's what the education system's like, like telling you what to do, how to think, what yeah. what's the best treatment. Whereas 
And it does. It takes away our power to choose. It takes yeah. away our power to think and explore. And it, you know, it does take away our our power to sort of express the best and feel the best and connect with what is actually right for us. So yeah, I think the um but it, it's not necessarily easy to step out of that box if that's all you've known in your life. Yeah. Because that's a comfort zone. It's it's scary to go out of the comfort zone and to think differently because you feel like you're the only one. Yeah. You know, and, and that feeling of being on your own is scary for you know probably everybody yeah. to a certain extent. You know, you think well everyone else is doing that, you know, isn't there safety in numbers? You know, we've been mm. through that recently, yeah. obviously. But you know, the holding true to what you know is right. Yeah. Mm. I mean, it can be a lonely road. Mm. You know, it can be a lonely road going the direction because we and as you know we have such as humans we have such a need for connection and to be part of a tribe mm -hmm. and so your network the people you surround yourself with is so important because in those times and as i said rocky's going has gone through it you know initially you know people were and i had a friend over the other week and she said i was going to ring you up jj and i was going to say what the hell are you doing like, why aren't you going the, the conventional way? And she said, I was angry with you, is what she said. Yeah. And and she loves me. She loves Rocky. She wants the best for us. And she's coming from a beautiful heart space. And then she said, but now that we've had this discussion and I've seen Rocky, she's like, I get it. I get it now. And she said, I'm going to hand up and say I was wrong. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, that's. That's fantastic. Now, I don't know if we're right or wrong, wherever direction we're going, but I can still put our hand on our heart and say we've looked at, at, at the options and then we've made an informed decision to where we want to go. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that, as you said, there's, there's so much social conditioning around how we should think or not think. And um, and and so so many people are just doing what they think is right. And the interesting thing is about beliefs is that we all have them and we all have limiting ones. So listeners, they're the ones that they limit. Mm -hmm. We've got beliefs, things that we hold true that aren't serving us going mm -hmm. forward. They aren't serving the goals that we want to, to achieve. But sometimes we don't even see what they are. Um and it's funny because I've been a coach for a long time and I've always sort of, I don't know, had this thing that oh, I'm really open with my belief. Yeah. You know, and I always challenge things and I always look at stuff. Uh, and it's when I had my son, he's now 25, when he started challenging my beliefs, that's the, that's the time where I thought, shit, hold on a minute, I started getting defensive about things. Yeah. And I didn't realise how many beliefs that I stood for that I was sort of, you know, I, I wasn't going to be open to having them challenged. And that was surprising for me. You know, mm -hmm. I often say one of my biggest teachers is my son mm -hmm. because he has challenged me. He's challenged me on things that I didn't even mm -hmm. know. Were, you know, and I remember when he was young and he would always challenge. Um, I say this story often. We were at the the Melbourne Zoo when he was little and and he was only little, I think he was like tiny or something, he's tiny. You know when the guys um you know they've got the they're doing the sort of presentation yes. they were at the seals. Yeah. And he was you know, they were down there and we were up up high and the guy's got his little mic on and he's talking about the seals and he says, Has anyone got any questions? And I didn't know but my son's got his little mind up and I'm like and he said, how, how many seals are there? Oh. And this is what I thought, Sharon. I thought, there's three. Look at them. Right. And I started getting back. Because I'm thinking, obviously, there's three. And so I'm sort of looking around saying, oh, you know, he's so young, you know. You know, naive, asking silly questions. Mm -hmm. And the guy said, what a great question. Because we have three seals here. And we've got three seals in another enclosure. And that, it's a simple story. Love it. But it took me back and I'm like, oh, 
there's something behind the curtain. Mm -hmm. That's the I'm right. Not goose, goosebumps. That there's amazing. something behind the curtain. I didn't even know I was there. Mm -hmm. And um, and so we went on this journey from little to when he got 15 and 15 and started challenging lots of things that we were just challenging religion. I wasn't ever brought up in a mm. religious family. Mm. Um, and so he challenged back with me, spiritual history, science, mm. all those things and how they're all connected. Um, but it's interesting how we, I don't think we'll ever be really open for our beliefs to be mm. challenged because there's going to be something that we will hold on to. Mm. And I think when we get angry about that, then I think that's a really good time to go, aha, it's just this fear of it. Yeah. Because there's something there. And you may still hold on to that belief, but I think if, and I'm finding that with things like cults, um, and I found it through COVID, people really angry. Mm. They were angry at, at people that weren't conforming in a certain way or not conforming. You know, there was this anger, and that's our stronghold all the time. So true. I love your that your little three year old boy <laughs> just asked the question because yeah. at that young age, like that's where we've had our greatest creativity yeah. and our intuition is at its best. It's not really until we get into mainstream educational ways of thinking. So I love that even that instructor just complimented yeah. him and commended him on asking the question because. We all need to ask more questions. Yeah. How many of us don't ask questions and just go with what we're told? Yeah. If we can ask more questions, that's what opens up the box for learning yeah. and discovering and perhaps looking at things from a different perspective. Yeah. Just doing it there. Yeah, absolutely. So do you feel that you're and I'm real I have to say this, I'm really honored that you're sharing this story. Oh. I know that this must be challenging for you. Um and I, I can't imagine how challenging it is. And and I did, when I read your bio, I connected. I lost a baby um, and uh, just before Dylan. And I couldn't imagine going through something like that and having, you know, a cancer diagnosis mm. and having two other babies that I'm looking after. Like that is just, when I think about it, I think, wow, that's, you know, that, that's a really challenging situation. And yeah. to then... Decide, you know, that that you that you haven't really shared this story in twenty years, mm. you know. And I'm looking and going, and knowing you and knowing your, I'm like, just write a fucking book, Sharon. Like, <laughs> write a book. If you don't write a book, I'm going to slap you around. Like, you got to write a book. <laughs> it's got to happen because you know I think it's it's so inspiring, and I'm sure this is the next step of your healing, even just discussing. Yeah. Um, do you feel like you're a different person to that? 31-year-old prior to that journey, do you feel that you're a different person? What have you, what have you learned? How have you changed from that? Oh, look, um, yeah, I guess, you know, 20 years on, I, I, and I've never really shared it because the story because I didn't want to invite it back. You know, I'm a strong believer in what we focus on, we attract, you know, and so I, that's why I've always loved looking forward, one of my strongest yeah character traits is you know positivity and futuristic you know yeah. so I love thinking forward and so I didn't want to invite anything back so that's why I kind of brushed it aside pretended it didn't happen yeah. and really never visited that place until sort of more recently um just a couple of things that I've kind of shared with a couple of you know close people and so then when you know we connected about Rocky and what you yeah. guys are going through. And then we sort of opened up a bit more about my journey. I shared that, you know, in the hope to help really yeah. bring you guys some hope and light that it's possible. Yeah. And um, it did, it certainly got me thinking that, well, you know, perhaps this is something that I do really need to become more, um, just more open and accepting and embracing of and, and sharing more so that perhaps yeah. it may be offer some inspiration, some hope, some, opportunities for other people to explore things differently and know that they're not alone yeah um so am I different now well I certainly I call upon that 31 year old gutsy woman at times you yeah. know in the last four years I've had a debilitating back and hip issue that I was also told I needed surgery for but I thought 
if I, this body was clever enough to work through cancer on its own, it's going to heal yeah. a structural degenerative issue. And here I am now back racing, running. So that determination and mindset and the experience of the cancer journey that I went through has certainly fueled me and given me strength and inspiration um, and knowing of health strategies. You know, it's allowed me to just have an unwavering and unshakable knowing of the power of our body to heal. Yeah. So, you know, I resort, you know, I source out natural ways of thinking, the mindset, you know, I'm so passionate about exploring the 98% that we're told of our brain we don't use. Yeah. You know, I don't want to be a 2% brain user. Yeah. I need to die only using 2% of the brain, not me. Yeah. So we want to, you know, actively sort out how can we access that. So, you know, I'm very excited to continue the journey of exploring the body's power to express its full potential, whatever that may look like. Yeah. And, yes, the journey that I went through has fueled me and given me a robust strength within that I'll always be grateful for yeah. and appreciate and honour and implement more now. Like I'm finally now at a point in my life where I can guilt-free, finally guilt-free look after myself in the best way possible, Give, giving myself time, care, love, compassion, all those things that previously I would feel guilty about. Um, and the interesting thing is, is when we, as mums, start looking after ourselves better, our kids are our greatest cheerleaders. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Do they want their mums to do fun things? They want yes. their mums to be happy, healthy, look, taking time for themselves. Yes. Whereas our mindset of mums is often, oh, no, we better not do that. We better look after our kids. Yes. You know, they come first. But our kids want us to be healthy and well. Yes. So... Yeah. It's our responsibility to ensure that for them. Show yeah. them, you know, I was, when, you know, and, and you know, it's just a journey. You know, I raised my three kids on, on, on my own as a sole yeah. parent. And they, you know, when my girls were in their early teens, I would see them self-sacrificing. And yeah. that was a slap in the face for me. Because yeah. it was at that point that I realised that they're doing what I had done yeah, you know, I was completely self-sacrificing, you know, feeling guilty about looking after myself, pushing, running on empty because we can, right? Yeah. Is it ideal? No. Is it thriving? No. But on the surface, things kind of look pretty good, but yeah. in inside we can be depleted. And when we see in our kids traits like that, you know, we would it, it really hit home for me and it really helped me start to prioritise my self-care with our kids. And I think that's the key part of it you know we can all be looking after ourselves but why should we be rushing back and feeling bad for doing that as women yeah. you know we need to honor appreciate and love looking after ourselves yeah we need to yeah absolutely and i think by you sharing your story it's also helping people do that and also giving them hope i talked about before when you know people look up to someone and and particularly when they're fearful and and often, particularly going down the natural path, there's not a, as many people that are talking about it. And so, mm. therefore, some people think it doesn't happen. Mm. And and I think there's so many people that have gone on the journey that don't say anything because they're scared people might criticise them or whatever it is. Um, so you're helping do that. You're helping people go, okay, gee, it is possible, it is possible for me to explore different options, uh, you know, and, and we are strong human beings that, uh, you know, as I said, we've been able to go, let's look, let's look at all the evidence, let's look at all the information and make informed decisions on our life, whether it be our health, our business, our relationships, whatever it be, mm. that I find it really empowering to be yeah. able to say, hey, I can just... You know, I don't have to take. I don't have to let anyone else take take responsibility for my decisions. I can be responsible for my decisions, and um, and I find that really empowering. Absolutely, yeah. you're right. You know, our health and our life is so multidimensional. Yeah. You know, it is emotional. It is physical. It is spiritual. It's energetic. It, there's nutritional elements. There's 
business, there's mindset elements. There's so many layers yeah. for us to heal, unravel, peel away, explore. Yeah. And that's where I believe our health will flourish. You know, we're not just a physical thing. And this is why, why I love chiropractic so much is because it honours that innate ability to heal and everything's connected. You know, the energetic, electrical, you know, wiring through our body that emanates healing flow. Yeah. And traditional medicine looks at segments of the body. It's reductionistic in its approach, right. which means, you know, injuries here, let's fix this. Yeah. You know, there's something wrong here, let's just look here. Yeah. You know? So whereas looking holistic allows that inner power to flow, heal, repair, regenerate, to be enhanced. Yeah. So that I think is when we can tap into that true power to heal and our body as a whole. Yeah. A whole body, mind, spirit level you know deeper 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 layers getting to know our layers more and more deeply is where i believe true life is when we're living in a busy world and it's just quick superficial catch up catch up Mm band-aid care that's just skimming the surface and meanwhile what's going on deep inside you would never even connect with yeah and i think talking about a superficial world i think it's a lot of people I feel live on that superficial world, whether it's the superficial, you know, you've got your house, you've got your job, you got, you know, and it's, you've got your stuff, you know. Um, I remember when, you know, Rocky was diagnosed and I said to him, I just don't work, give up work. And he's like, I can't do that. I'm like, yes, you can. I don't care. I don't, well, if, if we live in a caravan, we'll live in a caravan. I don't care. Like, it's only stuff. And I think that when you, you know, you, you realise that this is all temporary. Yeah. You know, this this whole life is temporary. Yeah. And then you, you know, there's so much more to explore in life than just to be blue in my, um, I'm just going to say library, it's not a library, it's an office. I love like, that library, by the way. It's like a oh. library. Um, but there is so much, and I've got, I can show you, I've got, I've got, I've discovered the library, the actual library, you know, the public library at the moment. Oh, my gosh. I haven't been to the library for years and I'm addicted to it. I've got, I get more and more and more books oh. and I'm like, I haven't got enough. And my my son and I are the same. We're like, we haven't got enough time in our life <laughs> to learn everything we want to learn. My, my son's, at the moment, he's learning how to curse and drive, right? Oh. And he said, and I love this, and he's 25, and he said, Mum, you know, for for um, most of my life I thought I can't bike, I'm not a good rider. And he goes, well, that's not true because I can learn how to bike. So he's starting to learn this cursive riding, and it is beautiful. I'm telling him to hurry up. He's like, he's, do, he's up to the level of K, I think, at the moment. I'm saying, hurry up because you've got to write, <laughs> you've got to be able to write on, on your Nana's um, card with that special writing card. <laughs> But, you know, you're just being open to learn whether it's history. Like everything is so connected. And when yeah. you start to go down that rabbit hole of learning, yeah, um, I find that, again, it's so empowering. It like, is. And I think finding something that brings you joy and lights you up inside. Like yes. I'm always, you know, encouraging people to do more of the things they love. What is it that they love doing? What brings them joy? Find ways to do more of it because that's what radiates a beautiful healing frequency. It lights you up and that beautiful energy just is so magnetic to other people. Like people just love it when someone's doing something that they're really passionate about. Yeah. Even if you don't, you know, some people don't care about cursive writing, but how exciting it is that your son is actually learning something that's creative and, Taking on a new, you know, a new creative challenge. Yeah. I think it's amazing. And I think it is another level of tapping into our neurological, yeah, you know, neuroplasticity. You know, it's new yeah. neural pathways that are being developed. Yeah. Love it. So what's next for Sharon? Oh, gosh. Well, we're pretty excited. We're mapped out in our practice. We've got, we do health workshops. So we've got some really exciting breath work programs coming up. We've got... Yeah, I love uh, some sleep uh, workshops um, where I talk about brain function and how we can enhance the theta brain waves to access better sleep and um, 
lots of different programs we've got coming up for the workshop program next year. Yeah. Um, but I guess for me, like I am planning to break another national athletics record what? <laughs> for the steeplechase in the 50 years age group. And I'm on target, a bit of work to yeah. do, but on target. That would be um, later this year. So working on restoring power, speed and some physical um, challenges to um, achieve there. Um, what else? More self-care day. Like um, one of my greatest joys is when I see women looking after themselves better yeah. and ha being happier. And so I use my journey, my challenges, my learning to sow seeds and encourage and to help others to become more active, more joyful and doing things like this, aren't you? Doing new things that find, you know, that bring some joy. Yeah. So, yeah, we will see. I love that. And I have to say, talking about limiting beliefs, watching you on Instagram and some of the, like, the you doing, what do you call it, the hurdles? <laughs> And I, I looked, the first time I saw that photo, I had this feeling, and it took me back to when I was young, I hated the hurdles. <laughs> I was so scared of them, and I never grew out of it. So I'm looking at it going, oh, cringing. I don't know why. I don't know what happened. I don't know if it was just a, I don't know if I fell over them. I don't know. Um, but it's interesting to see. Well, it's interesting you say that because having had this recent injury chronic injury in the last four or five years i haven't done a water jump in the steeple for a few years and yeah. so me coming back to hurdles in the last month was very scary yeah. so if you look on my instagram the first couple of hurdles that i did that i posted a few months a couple of months ago i'm very hesitant because i my mind i was fearful yeah. but i know the only way to overcome it is to go through it do just it. to do it so not yeah. overthink it so i'm very much an action tag i'm just going to do this not overthink it and just continue to do it to build that belief muscle yeah. and overcome the fear. To yeah, do it. It's a bit like the um, I don't know if you've read the book Five Second Rule by yeah. Mel yeah, Robbins. I've read it. Yeah, love it. And I know I was talking to you about because uh, we do the infrared saunas. Yeah. At your um, clinic, and when we were talking about doing the cold plunges in the ocean, yeah. And you said just get in there. Just oh, the first time I did it, I hated it. Please, yeah. I hope I'm not putting people off, but I did hate it. Every like I was physically in so much pain. My legs were in so much pain. I'm like, I don't want to do that again. And so the second time I just I could I didn't get in. I'm like, yeah. I'm not doing it. My husband Rocky went in. Um and then we yeah. had that chat and he said, just do it. And I'm like, you know, and then I thought of five, four, three, two, one. And so that's what I did the next time. And I just raced in. Rocky was still at the beach. He was still on the sand. And I'm like, whoosh. I just like, in. Just do it. So good. Um, and, and then I did it. And I just went under. And then I was like, okay, it's done. And then the more I did it, the less it hurt. Like that. And then you see, like, the, you know, that first immersion you did, the fear, the body response, yeah. the physiological kind of freeze that you felt. Yeah. See how much power we have to work through things like that. Yeah. I mean, people have experiences like that for other fears, you know, yeah. whether it's you know how much how prevalent anxiety is yeah. and antisocial kind of responses are for people. But we have the power, yeah, to work through it naturally through decisions, choices, and taking action amidst yeah. the fear. It's truly a superpower. And I love, you know, the one of the magical things about the cold water immersion, which I love, is that, yes, we're choosing to put ourselves in an uncomfortable environment, but yeah. we know it's safe. Yeah. So we're choosing that. So it's not harmful. It's not hurting us. And, you know, we can apply that mindset to other areas yeah. of, our, of our life. You know, the things that we have a fear of, we're just like, no, it's okay. You think that yeah. you're not going to get hurt. No, I think no harm is going to come to you and you know this. So it is just taking that moment and reflecting like, like this. Yeah. I think that, you know, when we talk about healing, self-healing, you know, holistic healing, I often think about nurturing. And that's a word that comes up in yeah. my head all the time. Is this, and, you, and when you talked about that, that, bland, that what was it, that bland liver or what you know, the God. first word that came up to me was, is does this feel like it's nurturing me or not? You know, how do we nurture ourselves? 
mm-hmm. um, through different situations. And yeah. I think, I think not often, and it's, it's only recently, again, you know, I've been coaching for over 20 years, I felt it was about 30 years actually, but it's only recently that I've actually stopped and thought about me and how I how present I am with me. Mm. And recently there was um, some doctor that was talking about your lymphatic system and he was talking about the different spots to massage with your lymphatic system. And I think there's um, – I'm sorry, I can't remember. So you, you massage underneath and uh, like your collarbone yeah. and you do uh, um, behind the ears. Mm-hmm. Then you do like – Across your breastbone, under yeah. your arms, yeah. around your belly button, yeah. your groin, and then behind your knees. Yeah. And I thought, well, this is interesting because, you know, I had sort of like fatty sort of bits and I thought, and sore bits, which really popped up when I did the cold plunges. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, well, let me do this. And the first time I did it, I was shocked. Firstly, on one side of my, like on top of my right, my right breast, was sore and underneath my arm was like inflamed. I'm like, mm. shit, what is that? And then I went around my tummy and it was sore. Mm. And then behind my knees was sore too. And so I started doing it every single day. No, it takes five minutes. And then um, the the soreness on top of my right breast completely went. Mm. And, and the swelling, gone. Now, mm. I don't know what it was, but yeah. it went. I still feel tension around my tummy. And so something's there I know that I've got to work on. So whether it be emotion, if something is there I've got to work on, that it's getting better, that there's something I've got to explore there, yeah. and my behind my knees are getting better. Um, but there's so many times I think that we don't go within and actually really think about how am I feeling. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't even know my tummy was sore. How many years has it been sore? What is it? You know yes. what I mean? How do you know? So it's like really getting in touch with how you're feeling emotionally, how your body feels, all of that, I think, yeah. um, is such a continued journey for me anyway. Oh, it definitely is. It's self-exploration. Yeah. We touched on it earlier about, you know, feeling the emotions, allowing it to flow because it will embed in our nervous system and our body's tissues and cells and lymphatic system and congestion. Yeah will hold things that we don't want to be held in there. Yeah. And it's not until we start to really explore our bodies and feel and you know journey within that we can start to feel where's the tension. Yes. You know, using our breath. You know, there's so many beautiful strategies we can call upon. Yes, beautiful self-lymphatic massage, connecting, breath work, mindfulness, yeah. you know, all of the beautiful healing things that cost nothing. Yeah. No money required. Yeah. But it just takes you to focus on you and honour you. You know, yeah. we need to honour ourselves. Yeah. And I really believe that is, you know, the next level healing gateway. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Sharon. Oh, how, how will people get in contact with you? Well, we can follow oh, you. Yes, yeah, so I'm on Instagram and Facebook and we, we have a website as well. So I'm happy if anyone has questions, I'm more than happy you just find, you know, send me a direct message yeah. um, and, you know, happy to help any way I can. So or what's your website? Correct, uh, www.correctedchiro.com.au. Yep. And I'm Sharon Pedersen, uh, P-E-D-E-R-S-E. And there'll be a link or something, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah. And um, Running Raw for Life is my personal Instagram and I do a lot of hurdling and running on yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I'm cringing, fun. <laughs> cringing looking at the hurdling. But that's not, that's my thing. I've got to uh, I've got to lean in. <laughs> Maybe I'll do some hurdles yeah. and then I'll just overcome it, like you know, yeah. overcoming the fear of spiders. Anything is possible. <laughs> Anything is possible. All right. Well, we're up to the fun bit. Yay! So we've got our uh, ten questions. I'm going to go first. Okay. <laughs> so will you ask me ten in You're a row? Right. Ten in a row. Right. Right. Then you then you'll ask me. All right. Are we ready? Okay. Ready. What's your favorite book? I love Seven Spiritual Laws of Success by Deepak Chopra. Beautiful. Yes, this is a prompt you. I haven't had I have to think about it. I know. It's a, <laughs> it's a beautiful book. I love it. <laughs> Best piece of advice that you have been given? It takes a village to raise your family. Beautiful. Who will play you in a movie? 
Jen Lacaz. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> Champion. Oh. She's now training for a marathon. She's gonna. She's going to Paris for the Aussie team in the marathon. Oh. She's my Steffi Chase <laughs> hero. What's one thing on your bucket list? To fly to Paris first class with my son. Yeah. It's always been on my bucket list, that one. Yeah. Have you been to Paris before? No. <laughs> um, what's your favourite TV show or movie? The Lion King? Yeah. I love you know, Dylan and I, my son Dylan, we have so many amazing memories watching all those type of kids' shows, like Finding Nemo. Yeah. I still can't watch the start of that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. So we have, you know, little blankets on, our little snacks and I love the Lion King. And I love it. there's a few other ones too, but that one comes to mind because I have sat Noah and I have sat with candles watching yes. it. And, yeah, love That's it. cute. Um what would you change in the world? More plants. More plants. Less buildings, more nature. Beautiful. If you could have five people currently dead or alive to have dinner with, who would you choose? My dad, yeah, my brother, because they're both from here. Um, dinner with Don Bon Jovi. <laughs> <laughs> so these are individual dinners. We're not like having a group dinner. Yeah, yeah. Group. <laughs> um, who else? Um, Dolly Parton. I love Dolly Parton. I think she's a really smart businesswoman. Yeah. She's fun. She's yeah, very talented. And who would be the fifth? Hmm. Who is? Um, Deepak. Right. What would you tell your 17-year-old self? Tell my 17-year-old self that hmm, be kind to yourself and honour yourself. What is something that not many people know about you? How many people know about you? Well, just what I've said on the podcast, firstly. Not many people know about me. Mm. I feel like with social media, people know a lot about me, <laughs> but I see something they don't know about me. You've got a hidden talent? A hidden talent. I, oh gosh, that's what they don't know about me, is, um, hmm. I've never had a Panadol in my life. That's a good one. <laughs> well, no one will know that. That's a good one. Uh, what legacy do you want to be remembered for? That's your last one. What legacy? That I have been of being someone that has shared confidently the truth about the, the body's ability to heal and that I've been able to bring hope, always striving to bring hope to people and love and light to people and encouragement. Beautiful. I love that. Thank you. All oh, right, now, now it's my turn. Oh, oh, okay. I said to Sharon, I'm always scared. Oh, I don't know why I put this in my podcast, getting me to answer questions, but anyway, let's go. All right. And I changed my mind too. Sometimes people ask me the same question, then I'll put a different answer. Oh, and anyway, oh, don't hold all right. the answers. I've just got to read my messy writing. Okay, Jane. Okay, okay. What has been your favourite podcast interview in your career? Ooh, oh, there's so many that I loved. Uh, I've been really blessed to interview amazing people, including yourself, Sharon. <laughs> um, so the past podcasts, I've had so many that stand out. One would be Baz Dubois, um, that I really love Baz from The Living Room. So those of you that watch The Living Room and his, um, yeah, I don't know what he's in, so in on some morning show now, I read his book and he um, is living with cancer at the moment. Um, but yeah, I found him really inspiring. He's just got such a, a beautiful mindset, but he's also very vulnerable, and I mm. love that about him. Yeah. I love seeing a male um, 
open themselves up and be mm. vulnerable with their emotions. They don't like everybody's yeah. number one. Yeah. Just hunt that one down. Okay. So can you share with us a time in your work or an example in your work career where you went above and beyond the call of duty? Wow. Um, in my work career, above and beyond. The, the thing that I always think of is just, just when we're touring. So when we're touring, we are just full on um, and, and, and the, the focus that my crew, we haven't done live events for a while now since COVID, but the whole time is to make sure that we serve the room. And I remember this, and I don't think it's above and beyond, but this story comes in my mind, was this beautiful man in Queensland when we did this um, event and he had that um, disease, what's it called? Um, when that footballer's got that, footballer's got the disease, the, the neurological disease. Mm. He got the hats, what are they called? What's it called? It starts with M. Um, Neurofine, uh, new, um, NMD. That's it, yes. Yeah. So he um, had contacted me to say, look, the access and, um, and it, you know, how, it, you know, he may need to leave because he's not well. Um, so he was near the end of his life. And um, I know, I get emotional. Mm -hmm. So he came into the room, was our puppet speaking, and um, no one else knew. And he's such a lovely man. I, I hadn't met him before. So he came in, he's in the room, and we upgraded him to VIP. He had all our things. And he put his hand up to get coached. And he got up and he... No one knew that he was dying. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. And he got up and I coached him and he motivated the whole room. And he and I then he sat there at lunch and he was so inspiring to everybody. And uh, yeah, I just remember that. Oh, God, oh, the impact, you know. I love it. One of the the phrases that my one of our chiropractic mentors, DJ Palmer, always said was, you never know how far reaching something you may see, think or do, say, feel or do, can impact the lives of millions of others. And, you know, look at the impact. Yeah. That's my next question. Thank you for saying that. Okay. Tell me about, tell us about your funniest childhood mischief. Oh, my goodness. There's lots of them because I was a rebel. <laughs> um, was am. Well, choose is one. Uh, I don't I wasn't really well. I was about fifteen, I think. So straight away, this memory come up, <laughs> and my sister, if she was listening to this podcast, so what happened was my sister, uh, my brother was down from Sydney, and so he wanted to lend my sister's car, and so. My nieces and I um, were at home alone, the three of us, and the car was there. <laughs> uh, my sister had dropped the car off so that when my brother could come, he would go and take the car and lend it. So I had an idea that maybe we could take the car <laughs> for a spin. <laughs> and so I remember so clearly me being the ringleader um, my niece is, uh, is six months younger than me. My other one's three years younger than me. And I'm like, let's take the car. Like, this is going to be fantastic. So I remember getting dressed up, getting lipstick on, to look you know, like you're nice. okay. <laughs> and um, getting in the car and taking off. Taking off. And my, my one niece, she, she, like, she bailed. She was last minute. She was like, oh, I'm not going to go. So I've got my youngest niece, uh, Danny, Danielle. So she's in the car with me and we draw I drove from uh, Clifton Hill, 
Yeah. To Collingwood. Oh. <laughs> Melbourne. And tell them I'm finding roads. <laughs> and I remember even telling someone off in the road on the road and beeping at them. Yeah. And it was when we came back, when I drove back down the laneway that the neighbours sprung me and told my my mum, oh, so we got sprung. And did you get in trouble? Yeah, I got in trouble. Did you get us with a rebel? <laughs> but we had fun. Luckily, I didn't kill anyone. Oh, my God. Please don't do that, people. <laughs> All right. So most recent, more recently, you and Rocky have embarked upon a beautiful health journey to yeah. try and, you know, re to regenerate beautiful healing and you've changed your diet. So yes. I know that you've really prioritised vegetarian meals. So yes. what is the most favourite vegetarian meal that you've discovered on your more recent? My favourite uh, vegetarian meal, well, I love pasta. Mm. We love pasta. So yeah. it would be a pasta dish. I make gnocchi with... Mm. Um, yeah, so I make gnocchi, homemade gnocchi, so um, organic potatoes, and I love the cream with mushroom sauce, but I don't do mushroom dairy anymore. Yes. So I use the coconut oh, milk. Yeah. So yeah. coconut milk with leek, with um, mushrooms, and it's delicious. Oh, yummy. Is that the one? So. <laughs> <laughs> no, <I'm kidding. laughs> so that's one of them. Okay, great. All oh, right, thank you. Yum, yum. Because I know all of your beautiful cooking posts. Oh, my God. Oh, you got the muffins. I've, I've done the muffins. They're not going to be warm anymore. But anyway. Oh, lovely. Okay, so what would you love to be doing in five years' time? Five years' time, I would love to be running retreats uh, outside of Australia and with a group of people that – have different expertise as well to really inspire people uh, to live their best life. I would love to be doing that and I would love to have a series of my own books uh, that are going to support people in their mindset so that one day when I'm gone, there's these books that people can hold on to. I'm writing a book at the moment and I want that book to be the book that has got highlights, scribbles, ripped. Mm. You know, I want I want that to be the, the book that people will have on the bedside table and want to refer to in life. That, oh, that's what I'm writing at the moment. So, yeah. Can we sign up for that retreat yet? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty early bookings. <laughs> okay. Now, um, question six. What is the greatest challenge that you've had in business? And how have you overcome it? The biggest challenge that I've had was through COVID, 100%. So with COVID, what had happened was I had all events running running um, across Australia. Um, so I've done most of those events and then booked everyone into training throughout the year. Um, and then everything shut down. Mm. Uh, I lost my personal assistant, so my personal assistant moved on um, and I had all these people that couldn't get training because you couldn't, couldn't do live events. Um, so I had to be, I had to have conversations with people and, and say, you know, change dates. So that was really challenging for people. People were scared too. Um, and then I had to adapt. So I adapted coaching to online, which I was really resistant to do. I didn't want to do online because I love face to face, yeah, I love yeah. connection. So that was was a challenge, but I did it. And then I did a business mastermind online. I built all of that, got a new um, EA, and we built that together. Um, yeah, so that was challenging, but but I really grew from that. Oh, amazing, yeah. gosh. It's an interesting, isn't it? Like what we, when we're forced to do something, like we, what we never thought we would want to do, we, we do it. And it's like, yeah, oh, I actually learned a lot from that. That's yeah. Cool. Um, what's your favourite proverb or quote? Seek first, seek first to understand before you can do it. By Stephen Covey. Oh. So I think that is a really, yes. um, really amazing quote because I think you can't understand someone else unless you you seek to understand where they're coming from. That's nice. I like that. Yeah. 
Um, this is a little similar to one that you asked me. Great minds think alike. <laughs> what message would you give to your 10 year old self? Don't draw a tower to me. Why they going to do that? that. It's from your experience, it just drives you. Be safe. Uh, my, what I would do is I would say, explore your beliefs, challenge your thinking. Seek out others that are doing that. Mm. I would have loved to have done that earlier. Yeah. And to just explore different things. Yeah. Um, you know, this health journey that we're on, you know, it's taken, you know, I remember just finding out in probably 10 years ago how toxic things in your environment, mm. you know, and I was still brushing my teeth with fluoride and yeah. stuff like that. And, and I didn't know that. Yeah. I never challenged that. I didn't even know it was in my awareness. Yeah. So now I'm always thinking of everything in the environment. Yeah. Um, I'm not there yet. We're still learning, but um, yeah, yeah, that's what I'd say to think for yeah. myself. If I knew you back then, what yeah. we know now, right? That's great. Thank you. Now, um, what has been the toughest personal challenge that you recall in your life and the lesson you learned from that? I think there's, and I often talk about defining moments, there's a couple and I sort of put them together. So one was when my dad died of cancer when I was 17. So that was really challenging. Uh, and because I was very close to my dad, he was a bit of a rebel too. Yeah. <laughs> and so he was the one that, you know, he his saying stays in my head. He'd always say, there's no such word as can't. Uh, and so even though he's a rebel and um, he really believed in me, so he gave me that belief. And so when he, you know, I lost him, it was like I felt lost. Um, and even through COVID, I, I reflected on my dad, even though it was so many years ago, I'm like, what would dad do? He'd probably be protesting right now. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I think my, my mum's completely different. I'm yeah. like, oh, I think my dad's probably there to protest. Um, so that was at 17 and then I was in an abusive relationship. Um, so that was, yeah, there was a lot of learnings from that. And then when I lost our baby, when I was seven months pregnant. Mm. So that was another challenge. And then, of course, the challenge with Rocky right now. Mm. So, you know, with him having prostate cancer. Mm. Um, so all of them have been challenges, but like you, I always look at what's the learning or what will the learning be? Yeah. What what am I learning from this? And um, and I, I often pull pull towards my, my empowering questions and my when in, anything happens that's challenging, I always I say to myself, What's good about this? And even if I think at the moment there's nothing good about this, yeah. I'll go find something good about this. What is yeah. good about this? What could be good about this? How are you growing from yeah. this? Um, so, yeah, and I think I've grown more tenacious. I think I've been through those experiences. I think that I've uh, become even more authentic. Mm. You know, I think that. I was, when I was younger, I was a big personality, very much a huge need to be liked. Mm. And now I love being liked, but this is who I am, you know, mm. warts and all. And I'll I'll stick up for things that I believe in. Mm. And I think that only came from my experiences, even, you know, the domestic violence that I went through, yeah. um, when I didn't feel like I had a voice, yeah. that really later on, I'm teaching people how to voice. I'm saying speak out, you know, speak out about things that are important to you. Yeah. Um, and so without that experience, I wouldn't have gone down that path. So yeah. Yeah. Love it. thank you. Um and finally, where can you share a time when you had to stretch way out of your comfort zone? I would say there's a couple, and I think this is more physically, there's a couple that pop up. One one pops up with Tony Robbins when I went to his event and then walked on poles. Oh, yes. Right? So, and I'd fired myself up to walk on these hot poles. And just before I was going to go on, 
my phone, I get a message from my husband, Rocky, and he's like, don't you, don't go on this wild cold because you've got an event. And because and, I had a, an event, and he's like, yeah. and I'm like, mm. and I'm like, no, I'm going to do it. And then as I was going to do it, my pants kept rolling down. And so as I started walking, my pants were falling down and I sort of got out of that mindset and I could feel the cold halfway. Yes. And so down the end of the thing, you there was a puddle and I put my feet in the puddle and I found my feet half up. And I looked, you know, like bubble wrap? Mm. That's what my feet looked like underneath. They looked oh, like bubble wrap, right? Cool. And again, things happen. I believe there's always a learning. So I just stood in that puddle and I was cheering the other people on. And I thought, I have to go to the medic. And so as I cheered that person on, that person went and started walking to the medic. I looked at my feet. Don't ask me how. They were back to normal. So, I don't know what happened. I had no idea. This one minute, they were like blown up like bubble wrap. And I knew that they were burnt the next minute. It was gone. That's amazing. I love it. I did the fire walk too. And yeah, an amazing experience, really. The the power of our mind, right? I love that. That's how Tony kind of really helps people tap into that. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And I, and I thought of the just a lot, I'm going to finish with that last one because it relates to what you do. And when I think about marathons, and I remember uh, that I started running. So years ago, I started, I thought, had this limiting belief that I couldn't run. And my beautiful girlfriend, uh, Colleen Callender, who's one of the podcasters, is amazing. She got me into running and she goes, you can just go from one tree to one tree. Yeah. You should do one tree to one tree. And she's always been in it quite physical. And I reckon she stitched me up because I reckon that tree that she picked was too far <laughs> away. And I'm like, where is this freaking tree? I'm going to die. Anyhow, so she got me started into running and I started to run um, 5 Ks. Mm. Uh, but I was still just in starting into running. And then I one day thought, I'm, I'm going to do this run and it was in Williamstown and I think it was 10 k's by memory or 12 k's I can't remember but what I do remember is that what you need had to do was you do the track and then you have to go twice around the track so say if it was six kilometers you do 12 kilometers oh. right <laughs> so and I hadn't done that before so I'd done five kilometers that was like the longest I'd done but not only that I thought how am I going to be thinking when I get to the end and I go, shit, I've got to do that yeah. again. Yeah. Like I already knew that that was going to be a mindset challenge for me. So I had in my mind, okay, once I come around the first time, I'm just going to go, yeah, 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 yeah. In my head, oh, yeah, yeah. And get really excited and just keep going. Yes. And so yeah. that's what I did. And I did. I probably came last. I don't know. But I did it. Oh. I did, and I didn't die. Yeah. And yeah. that's so exciting. I'm so happy to hear that. Is it actually when you make things fun, anything's yeah. possible too? Yeah. Good on you. Now we're just looking for another relay team member for our two well ladies, the 50 plus team. <laughs> <laughs> and now I just think uh, I've found her. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure about that, but I'm, I would like to get back into running. So I'm, I'm walking at the moment, but uh, yeah, that is something that I will, um, yeah, get into is as long as it keeps nurturing my body. And we've got that on public record. As long as it keeps nurturing. If I feel like just like that liver, if I feel it's not nurturing, <laughs> it's not going to happen, right? <laughs> so that's my out. So thank you so much, Sharon. And so, again, if they want to follow you. Yeah, I'm on Running Raw for Life on Instagram or you can find me on Facebook with my name. Yeah, and you've got some workshops coming up, yeah. so that'll be really great for people to yeah. to and and it's in Clifton Springs, so right on the Ballerine, so um, yeah. yeah, gorgeous, right near the beach, yeah, and uh, just up the road from there, which is great. Yeah. So yeah, make sure that you get to make sure firstly that you follow Sharon uh, on both of those on Facebook and have check out her website because she's got some great stuff there and the workshops that will be on there and. Uh, Ask her when her book is going to be out. <laughs> I'm going to put that on record. Okay. I'm going to ask, just, you know, say, when are you going to write a book, Sharon? Because you've got all this great knowledge. 
you've got this great experience and I'm just mm. look, I'm just planting the seed. Yeah. Because I know sometimes you plant a seed and it grows. So yeah. Thank you so much, thank Sharon. You. And um, yeah, I, I really got a lot from today. And uh, yeah. thank you for having me. It's been fun. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. See you guys.